with that, I will come to the next topic and that is generators. Um, so first of all, you remember from last week, uh, enumerate. Enumerate is this function that takes a collection and basically, as we know now, returns an iterator um, that doesn't only contain the elements of the list or other collection we are going through, but instead also returns an index of that that we can unpack right here such that we have index and the actual um, element of the collection. Okay, and if we, however, um, look at the result of enumerate weights, we're going to see that this is some kind of enumerate object. Or if we look at, if we zip, for example, two lists or two collections of any kind, we see the result is going to be a list object. And that is because Python wants to be efficient. And that's one of the huge differences from Python 2 to Python 3. In Python 2, those were all lists or something, returns some kind of collection. And here it returns some kind of, for example, enumerate returns an enumerate object. I can make a list out of an enumerate object, and then I can print this list. And now we see enumerate simply well, adds the index to all the elements. But Python does this. Um, Python lazily evaluates this enumerate, and it is um, purposely uh, an iterator instead of becoming a list because looping over huge lists is incredibly memory inefficient because the entire list must be in your uh, RAM the entire time. And so what Python instead does, it, it lazily evaluates, it lazily executes this enumerate object and only takes the next element when it needs to um, when you're, for example, iterating over it. So if you, had, if you iterate over a list, you always have to have the full list in memory and that's incredibly inefficient. So if we list over a range of this huge range, it's also an example and easily executed. But we see that if we loop over this, even though we only want to show the first um, 10 elements, so we break after the 10th element, this still takes quite some time because looping over lists is not efficient. If we loop over the range, it's evaluated lazily as needed and only the first 11 elements are actually going to be looked at. Okay, so that's really a nice thing of Python to be Python 3 to be more memory efficient. Okay, and these are basically generators and you can make your own generators. Python generator function is a function which returns a generator. You recognize generator functions by using the yield in the function body. So if you have some kind of function that doesn't that contains the yield keyword somewhere in the function body, then it is a generator. And a generator, you can basically look at a generator from the perspective that a generator basically is an iterator and that um, you can iterate over these generators. So it basically provides the next Dunder method, but it has this built-in me mechanism that makes it memory efficient. So this here, for example, is how we're doing this. So this here creates a generator and in the function body, we yield the one, then we yield the 10, then we yield the three, and then we yield the five. And we can now loop over my just created generator and print the contents of it. And it's gonna print one, then 10, then three, then five. Okay, so what is the actual difference between this generator uh, and a function? Well, if we did that with a function, we would never get below this point. If we would have a return instead of a yield, we would never get behind this point because it returns here no matter what and we're never going to get back. What happens in a generator is that the first time I call this, I'm going to this first yield here. So if I call a generator function, the code runs from top to bottom until it yields, until it reaches the first yield. And then my generator function exits. But the next time I'm calling it, it's going to continue after the first yield. And it's going to run up to the next yield. So the execution, if the program flow hits the keyword yield, the execution is stuck at the line of the yield until we call the next again. So a generator in Python is a subroutine. So when I call the generator, this object stays in memory and 
Normally functions, once they're done, they're done. They return their stuff and then the function forgets all the values that were inside the function. And generator doesn't. A generator keeps its state, for example, its state of, ex its state of execution where the interpreter just was. Okay, so if I, for example, set um, assign this generate numbers to a variable, well, first of all, I have created a generator object. So from this generator function, by using the parentheses, by calling this generator function, I'm creating a generator object. And generators, generator objects, are iterables, and I can loop over them. And they're also iterators even. How do I know it's an iterator? Well, it has the function next. And I can call next on it. And when I call next, I'm going to go to the generator function here, and I'm going to go there until I yield, <laughs> I, I reach the keyword yield for the first time, and then it's going to yield one. And the next time I'm going to call next, it's going to continue from there. So here we see it generated the one. And now when I call next a again, it's going to yield the 10. When I call next a again, it's going to yield the three and then the five. And then when it's done, just like every iterator has to, it yields the stop iteration. So this is again, basically Python syntactic sugar. So this being able to write something like this, um, is nice because Python basically adds all the behavior that once we're done here, it wait this is stop iteration, um, and the fact that um, the standard iter, iter method should be there. This is all syntactic sugar for some for how it actually works. But it's a really nice and really powerful construct in Python. Okay, so if I do it here first. I hit the one, and then. If I loop over it, I'm simply calling next over and over again until I reach a stop iteration. And so I'm printing only the 10, the 3, and the 5, this, this, and this line. And then if I try to print something next, I will uh, throw a stop iteration again. Okay, so when we call the generator function, we get an iterator. And in this iterator, it's going to execute the generator function from top to bottom, and it's gonna well, yield something every time the keyword yield is reached. And then it's stuck until next is called again. Okay, the generators are awesome because I can, for example, with the generator, I can loop over a large data set without having to have the full data set in my memory. And if I have that with huge data sets, it's normally it would take forever, but thanks to this efficiency, of only having the current element I'm looking at, for example, in my memory, this is perfect. Okay, so when we call a normal Python function, execution starts at the first line, continues until we reach a return, exception at the end of the function, and then the return, the function returns and gives back control to its caller, and any work done by the function is lost. And you call to the function, everything from scratch will start at line one. With a generator, so a function that has the keyword yield in it, it doesn't lose data. If a generator is called, it will run until the next occurrence of the yield keyword. When it's called again, it will start right after that until the next occurrence of yield. Dot, 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 or end of the function or return, in which case it's going to raise a stop iteration. So a generator is an iterator, which means we can loop over it and we, call, we can call next on it and use it the way we would use an iterator. So it has the attribute, so it has attributes, so it has the method, the dunder method eta. That means it's an iterable, and it also has the dunder method next, which means it is an iterator. Okay, so this is, if you're encountering this for the first time, it's a bit overly complex, but it's actually really useful for a lot of things. So for example, a generator is a perfect way to get rid of two convoluted nested for loops. Okay, so imagine I have this list of list of lists, and if I want to, Iterate over this list, I would have to do like this for i in nested list, for j and i, for k in j. And if I would have a fourth layer in this list, I would have to have another for loop here. And then when I want to do stuff, I do all I all have to do it here. And it's really, really nested. And seriously, if I have a list of lists of lists of lists of lists of lists, I'm eventually gonna be right behind here and I have to continue writing my code here, and that sucks. So this works. We see to find it. This works, but it's obviously not useful. So what instead I can, for example, do, I can make my nested list iterator here. 
That's the same thing as here, and it only yields the next k in j for every j in i and for every i in the list. Okay, so this will go through the first, the second, the third, and so on and so on. And if I want to call this, I can simply go for i in, and then I call my nested list iterator with this list I'm giving here. And then I'm only at the first in, uh, in, indentation layer, indentation layer, indentation layer. Okay. So I can make complex nested for loops less complex, or rather I can um, outsource this complex looping and if it's not necessary. So just like this, it's a perfect way of making your code clearer. Furthermore, and this is an actual example of uh, my code, generators are perfect if you have complex stuff to loop over or you want to replace that thing you're looping over. Okay, so I have in my code, I had the situation that I wanted to write a game player which can play live games. Okay, um, so I had a loop which was true all the time. So this is basically just running infinitely until I press Control C. And then it gets the game board image. So I had some game which was visible on the screen and I wanted an automatic agent to play it. Uh, so this, by the way, is a nice example of um, uh, <laughs> of a factory method. So the game board has this factory method get game board in it, so I don't have to call the constructor explicitly. Okay, but so now I had two modes. I had one mode when running this game player live on a live game, which is on my screen. Then I had to write true and then get the game board image, and that function had how to get it from the actual screen. And then I did things with it. But I also had a mode when I wanted to run this game player non-live and then it was supposed to go over all files in this and this directory and construct the game board from this very image non-live and then do the same stuff. So I had the mode for live running and for running from images in a certain directory. Okay, and if I wanted to change between this and this, what I would do at first is I would just copy these lines here and then replace it with this. So either this or that. But you can't do that programmatically. I can't say if mm -hmm, then loop over this, otherwise then loop over this. So if mm -hmm, loop over this, else loop over this. So it doesn't work with Python. But what does work is replacing these two lines with the generator. And then have the generator decide which branch to get into and if it's supposed to yield what's in here or yield what's in here. Okay, so yes, I could encapsulate this stuff here and I could basically encapsulate this to first, to second and to third in the method and then I could write it under here and under here, but it's still more code than encapsulating the part where I loop. Okay, and this is this example here. So I now have a board game iterator that has an argument live and if it's not live, then I'm doing basically this stuff here. And if it's live, it's doing this stuff. And by doing this stuff, I mean creating the game board here. In that case, it's also supposed to show it. So like I said, it's my real code. And then yielding the game board. So it's either, depending on what parameter we call it with, it's either going into this if branch or into this. And from then on, it's going to either continue this loop of yielding all game boards or game board images created from the images in the directory or yielding continually the get game board image chunk, the result of the get game board image chunk, which makes a screenshot from my screen. And so I could change my code to for board in board game iterator and then I could simply programmatically change false or true. So if it's supposed to be live, I can simply change that with this argument here. And then I can the do stuff, which is basically the same here. Um, the do the first thing, do second thing, and do third thing. So generators allow you to basically invert the program logic in loops sometimes. If you're new to this concept, you're not gonna understand it at first, I guess. But now that you've heard it, I think there are gonna be situations where you notice it makes sense to use a generator. All right, now I talked a really long time 
Um, time for an exercise. So you're supposed to use a generator to produce even numbers infinitely. Um, and then you're supposed to print the first 10 even numbers. Okay, I'm going to stop here for a second before I reveal the hint. Okay, the hint is you basically you're supposed to use a while loop to produce numbers infinitely and then we can wrap the generator function in enumerate and break up the first time values, which is what we did, uh, what I did up here. So this enumerate and then the function call and then if this enumerate bigger than 10, then break. Okay. Now I'm going to pause again. Pause done. Um, this is the way we could do it. Okay, so it's this one you saw before. So we have the generator even numbers here. And we're looping, so we're enumerating that. And we have the eye to know when to break. And we're printing the results of our even numbers generator. Okay, and what is our even numbers generator? Well, our even numbers generator is simply a function that runs infinitely. So it can simply run infinitely because we're getting out of this function every time we call the yield, right? And this is then simply increasing the i, so i is 0 at first, then 1, then 2, then 3, then 4. And if it's divisible by 2, then we yield it. So just as well, um, we could just increase i by 2 all the time and yield every i then. So at first i is 0, then we yield it, then we increase it by, so then we exit the function, we get the 2. We yield it, we increase it by 2, and so on, and so on, and so on. So this here prints the first 10 even numbers. Okay, so if you think you understood generators now, that's perfect, and actually maybe you should stop listening. But here's another way of seeing how generators work and what they are. A generator is a function that remembers its state between calls. It's the same as creating an object that can also be called and that simply every time it's called can change some attributes of itself to be remembered the next time it's called. And in Python you can even do this because you can make objects that are callable. These are then called functionals, I think. Um, so I can make this object here, so now it's a class. And for so for example, this here is also an even number generator. Every time, so when we initialize it, we set the index to zero, and then every time we call this object, um, we're gonna increase the index by two and we're gonna return the index. Okay, and now we can create a new numgen. And now we can actually call numgen. This is the magic of this call dunder method. Okay, and I can call it again and it's four and I can call it again and it's six and I call it again and it's eight. We don't even need these two things for that. So this is already how it works. But a generator is, like I said, also an iterable, which returns itself when the iter method is called and thus also an iterator. And for these two behaviors to be there, we also need the iter and the next dunder method. And now this here is the same thing. It's basically also a generator just written in another way. So and just like our generators here, we can loop over this and it works perfectly. Just that it starts here um, at the two and not at the zero. I would have to change these two lines, switch, swap these two lines. Okay, so this is basically how you can, what Python syntactic sugar makes out of um, a function where there's the yield keyword. In fact, Python will automatically make an object like this. But this is the more complex way to write it. You can do it in C++ like this because C++ doesn't have the yield keyword. But in Python, it's perfectly fine and a really, really nice and beautiful thing to use these kind of subroutine generators with the yield keyword.